Good morning. Thank you for joining the Model Site Summit webinar. We are ready to get started and we thank you for your flexibility um, as we work out some technical difficulties. Um, on the screen and as it has shown the entire time, you will see the Model Site Summit um, resources where you will be able to access today's presentation as well as all resources that align to it. So what you're gonna see on that page is you are going to see uh, the presentation for today. You will see a Padlet that you can interact with and you will also see all of the flyers that correspond with all of the upcoming project success trainings. And we will take time to break each one of those down as we move forward. But thank you all for attending. Uh, we're also gonna walk you through the chat box as well since we can't have you here, and thank you for your flexibility with that. We want to assure that you're able to have your voice heard um, and that we are able to respond to your questions. So we will go on ahead and get started today. Our panel um, will begin here in just a little bit, but we wanted to give you a good introduction to what today will look like. So we're going to share a little bit about the project success model sites. Each one of our model sites had very specific goals to what they wanted to accomplish for the 2019-2020 school year. And we wanna highlight and celebrate their work. Um, each model site um, took on different sets of goals um, and really spent intensive amounts of time working with their project success coach um, to help make those goals um, a reality. Um, and we obviously, as with any goal, we experienced challenges and uh, lots of uh, celebrations along the way. So today we will discuss those celebrations, and we will discuss some of those challenges that we had um, as we were working towards those goals. Um, and then we'll take a little pause and get our panel set up, and we will hear from our primary teachers um, and our model sites will be able to share out on two very um, specific topics, unpacking and then looking at inclusive practices. So um, we will spend some time asking questions, and then you will have the opportunity to jump in and ask questions in the chat box. So um, I'm gonna jump out in just a moment and show you the, the website and the Padlet, but I wanted to give a second to introduce our team. Um, Heidi and I are here and on the camera, but we have a, a team uh, of uh, project success coaches that work across the state, um, both providing on-site supports and model sites. And we also have um, project managers that help keep us all together. So. Um, I'm Meredith Keating Burke. Um, Amy Howie is joining digitally today. Um, Ashley Quick, you'll see her in the chat box. Um, she's one of our project success coaches. Heidi Brett Baker is sitting right beside me. And then managing audio today and uh, our project managers, Mary Baker Bidisa and Christine Krieger um, are in the back um, helping with all of the ins and outs of today's meeting. So I'm very proud of our team and the work that we have done this year and at the end we will share a, our email addresses feel free to reach out to any one of us with specific questions um, as we schedule on sites you will hear from mary or christine um, so know that they're a, a big part of our team and helping support our on-site and model site work so if you have not yet already we want to know who you are and where you come from so in the chat box if you would please share your name your district and school grade levels that you uh, work with um, within your school or in, within your classroom and the role that you have. And Ashley will kind of uh, monitor that and kind of share out. I, I'm seeing a few of them come through as well. Um, we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to see each other. And um, if you wouldn't mind also, if you wanted to share your email address in there, um, as we're sharing ideas, I think it's important to connect to the people within our region. Tina from Borden Elementary. Good morning. Laura, Kristen. Ashley's here from Mooresville. Sarah from Manchester. I know that Kristen's here. Hi, Mary Kate. <coughs> thank you. He and everyone come through and thank you for taking time out of your schedule and more importantly for changing your um, travel schedule today to accommodate. Um, some health needs that we have. So um, thank you. We're going to keep that chat box open. If you haven't had the opportunity to introduce yourself, uh, please do so. I think it's important uh, to see each other and see each other's names and emails. Um, 
and where you're teaching. And please take a look at everyone that's here today because those are great contacts to continue to reach out to. Project Success, if you're not familiar with our work, um, we support school districts across the state of Indiana and we support students with significant cognitive disabilities. And our goal is to increase outcomes with high expectations, presuming competence, um, and ashuring that every student has access to grade level content connectors um, with the outcome of making sure that we have um, job embedded professional development aligned to those high academic. You're going to hear examples today of each one of those um, as we focus on academic instruction, communication will be a focus of today, and employability skills, um, knowing that each one of those are a foundation to help make the um, most successful student possible. Project success supports unpacking the standards. We'll talk about that today. We support curriculum mapping. Um, we talk about goal writing. And we currently have a webinar that you will find as well. We talk about formative assessment and support districts um, with certificate of completion. Um, and we do that in a variety of ways. So we do webinars, but we're also on site um, doing professional development and intensive training with our model site as well. And you can always find our website at Project Success Indiana. And I wanted to just take a moment. I'm going to exit off of the presentation um, and jump into the website today just to show you um, how to access our website and how to find all that you might need on our so our website's Project Success Indiana. Um, and on the resource tab at the top is where you're going to find today's materials. So if you click on this resource tab at the top, and right here, this is a regional training. So you'll just use the drop down to find 2020 model site plan. And click go. Um, and on this page, you will have access to everything that you need to follow along. I'm going to scroll down slightly, um, and you see today's webinar here. But our presentation is there. Um, we have an aha moment page that will prompt you to, to log into a Padlet, um, which I'll show you on, on another slide here in just a second, and all of our upcoming professional development. So if ever you need anything from Project Success, you're probably going to find it on the resource page. Um, but today, we are located on resources. And then use that drop down menu for regional trainees to find today's presentation. If you select the Padlet, we'll use this for interaction today, um, but you'll also find a clear and concise place to find everything you might need. Um, so you'll see everything from information on the Padlet for the Model Site Summit, um, professional development, all the way to a few of our districts have some really good um, information that we weren't able to share today. So you'll see that as an example. Um, there, and you'll be able to click in and view those as well. So just another outlet, um, you can use the chat box, you can use Padlet. We want to be flexible to what you what you might need today um, and know that each district um, has a different way of uh, assessing. So here um, is the purpose. We have currently nine model sites, and I think it's important to know that each model site has a very different goal um, in mind when it comes to what they wanted to accomplish. So today's purpose is to share our model site goals. Um, one of our districts will have a representative up front, um, but each came with their team of support. Um, we're gonna highlight the work of our model sites and the collaboration of each team member and, and make sure that everyone's voices um, are heard today and discussing those challenges and successes um, within the model site team. And then we wanna have the opportunity and the purpose for today is to share best practice. Um, and lessons learned with, with you um, and being able to have your voices heard and what's working, what challenges you're experiencing within your own districts, um, and to be able to be problem solvers along the way. We know this work isn't easy, but we also know how essential it is and how it changes the trajectory of a child's life. So we want to be intentional about what we share today. So in the chat box, if you would just take a moment, what are you hoping to learn today? Um, and how can we make this digital session great? Um, and thank you again for your flexibility as we've changed the format. Um, and if we aren't covering that topic today, uh, actually we'll be collecting those uh, information that you're hoping to get, and we can we can reach out with different resources to help support your work. So if we're not covering it today, we can get you what you need to be successful. We'll give about one minute 
to allow you to, to um, respond. And Ashley will be jumping over. Uh, inclusive practices, I see that. Great. Thank you. Prioritize and map the content connectors. Excellent. We have lots of resources. Mapping, great. Okay. Noticing the trend. You better unpack the standards and educate your students on the standards. Perfect. We have some experts in the room on that. Great. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, inclusive practices. Perfect. Okay. So we will be covering um and you can continue to add, please do. Um we're going to be covering the unpacking uh, as we talk today, but we have several resources that correspond with that. And um, in, a, in a little bit, we will share out our on-site opportunities. And that can be something that um, if you're interested, please share that with your administrator. Or if you are an administrator, um, please take advantage of our at no cost um, professional development that corresponds with that. But our teachers here today, um, looking around the room, the majority have unpacked before the majority have uh, aligns to uh, a map to help uh, determine what they're teaching throughout the school year, um, both at the primary and then this afternoon with our secondary teams as well. So we will touch on that and we also have several resources. So we will make sure that you have those. All right, so what we're gonna do here, this is just gonna get a little bit tight. Um, we had a video set up, but we're gonna use my computer. So here's what we're going to do. Um, on the screen, you're going to see our model site teams. We have me and Chester today. Um, we have uh, Southwest Elementary from Greenwood. We have South Ripley Elementary. We have Crawfordsville and Hoover and Hose Elementary um, here in the room today. Um, we're going to just give a quick highlight of what their goals were. And I'm going to look at my notes over here. So if you see me um, moving side to side, but um, we'll share each one of our model site teams how uh, many years they've worked with us, kind of what their goals were in the process. And um, we can make this available to you as well. But we'll start with Crawfordsville. Um, we began two years ago with our Crawfordsville team. We began at uh, Hoover Elementary and then we at, with uh, Heather Sutton. And then we added Hose Elementary, which is the K through two program, um, and added Cindy Cooper to, to the team. And it, it's been a great K through five transition. We've had really good conversations about what that looks like within unpacking and curriculum mapping um, K through five, even though um, the, the programs are housed at two different buildings. So this is Crawfordville's second year with our team. Um, they've received professional development and attended uh, regional or onsite trainings for about three years um, and really focused on unpacking the English language arts content connectors and the math content connectors K through five. Um, and making sure that what was happening in K through two aligned with Heather's classroom K through five. Um, making sure that we included core vocabulary in those maps, making sure that we focused on uh, the curriculum that we used. And we looked at what was being provided to the general education students with the curriculum, especially in math, and assured that we were aligning to that and starting there and then um, leveraging unique learning systems to help support that work. Um, so that is that is really where we began with, with curriculum mapping. Um, the team will talk about some of their goals um, on, on at a later time, but those were the two primary goals. Unpacking, looking at the curriculum mapping K-5, and making sure that every student had access, especially thinking through those students that have the most intensive needs and how do we align to the content connectors and hold high expectations. And then our next model site is our South Ripley Elementary team. Um, this uh, is a real dynamic duo. I call it Team Lori um, because we have our teachers, uh, Lori, and our paraprofessional who um, is really um, equally the backbone in that classroom. And this is their first year as a model site. They have tremendous support from their administrators. Um, they have tremendous support. Uh, amongst their team in the classroom, and they work collaboratively with general educators as well. Um, we began the focus at looking at the standards and curriculum side by side. 
And um, as we were doing that, we decided that we would expand it to um, combining our math and our science and combining our ELA and our social studies so that we could leverage those topics side by side and making sure that those blocks of time were extremely intentional um, and, and we could fuse those standards together and, and highlight both. Um, and the team this summer even uh, went through every single curriculum activity resource that they have, boxes on the ground um, type of work um, with the standards in front of them to assure that the activities that they had, the materials that they had aligned to those standards. And if it didn't, they went back um, and found resources and materials that did. Um, and they, they worked really hard on their lesson plan units this year, and that has evolved and hopefully will change, and we'll talk to that today. But um, all of that aligned to those content connectors, we pulled the high priority um, and included um, some of the, the medium priority content connectors to make sure that we were, A, preparing students for those high priority content connectors, and B, we were thinking through the alignment to the IM assessment as well. And then our Manchester team, I'm going to let, um, I'm going to read off this one actually sitting right next to me. They're here with me. Um, and our Manchester team is unique in the fact that they have um, both a primary and secondary team that, that correspond and work together. Um, so we really have that primary elementary through middle school, junior high focus um, as a team. And um, this team has received professional development for several years, three years um, with their cooperative, Wabash Miami, um, really focusing the dish as a cooperative and then focusing at the district level as a model site. So really making sure that they were preparing along the way. Um, and that's, that's been, been three years as they've worked through uh, the professional development through on-sites and then uh, the last year as a model site and, and really working closely with Ashley through that process and receiving both on-site professional development and working as a model site. Team. And then last but not least with our elementary teams, we have Southwest Elementary. Um, with, with Jamie and Beth Henry at the elementary level. And they jumped right in the school year, um, joining forces around communication and really making that their central focus, um, making sure that every student had a mode of communication, um, going above and beyond to assure that that is across the school settings, um, and then aligning their curriculum to, to match that um, and setting high expectations. and. As we've moved through the school year, we've had, we're gonna be adding team members to this, this team and making sure that we have the full elementary perspective. Um, this team has focused on making sure that every student, if needed, has an AAC device. Every student who might need an alternate form of communication, such as Braille, they went above and beyond to do that um, and work closely as both teacher and paraprofessionals. So um, this will be um, wonderful to hear about how they've use the, the communication to kind of start as a foundational piece, because we do know that that is the starting point um, for, for our students. So um, it'll be great to hear from that team with that focus across, across the, the um, communication being the foundation. So what we are gonna do here, we're going to just pause for about three minutes. Um, I'm gonna unmute myself for just this moment of time, and we're gonna get our handle up in front so that they're in front of the camera and they're in front of the audio. And then Heidi and I will be asking questions of the team and they're gonna be able to respond so that you can hear from their perspective. Um, so while they're standing up, I'm just gonna do, have the slide up with each name and each district. We have um, representatives from each of our teams. Once they're up here, we'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, but their their names and information will stay up on the on the screen. Um, Ashley will manage the chat box, and when we're ready to jump into audio, we will do that. And I will pause my audio for just about three minutes, and we'll get that model site team in front of you. Thank you for being flexible.
All right, thanks everyone. Uh, we have our panel set up here um, and we're gonna give them just a moment to introduce themselves. You're gonna see their names on the screen, but we wanna, we wanna hear their voices too. Um, they're gonna do their best to amplify so that you can hear clear and concise and then we will move forward from there. I'm Laura King. I work at Western College Co-op in Hill um, and there and I work I'm Heather Sutton, and I am the director of the grade five school here at Hoover Elementary. I'm Dave Huber, and I'm from Elementary, learning from second grade. My name is Lori Wood. We work with first grade and Greenwood and Water. I'm Jamie Witherington from Greenwood at Southwest Elementary. I teach in the Beth Henry, I'm the principal at Southwest Elementary School in Greenwood. Hi, I'm Joel Weaver. I am the principal. All right, so what we are going to do next. I'm gonna can you guys hear me? Wait, we got one more. Fine. Um, we are going to ask a few questions of our team. Um, and these panel questions, um, each one of the model sites have worked on these goals um, in, in a variety of ways. So making sure that they have unpacked, making sure that they have um, looked at those high priority content connectors, um, putting different avenues. So some of our, our teams just focused on those critical content connectors in their curriculums, while others have unpacked uh, through a full curriculum mapping um, process. So I want to be mindful that each perspective will be different as yours will be, but hopefully between the teams, um, each one of those perspectives will help. Okay, so let's just have a quick um, conversation on where you began in the process. Um, thinking through uh, the grade level, the subjects, um, within the unpacking process, where was your starting point? Grade level, subjects. Okay. That all again. No, you're good. Keep going. Talk to me a little bit, as you mentioned, communication. What does that look like at Southwest Elementary? What What did that goal look like as you made it come to life? You're good. Um, okay. Let's slide. Yeah, I do. Um, so let's slide it just slightly closer. Please excuse. Yes. Thank you for being patient. We're going to pull this closer to our team so that they can hear it. And thank you for your 
um, patients. And then team, would you mind just scooting a little bit? We're gonna get real cozy guys um, so that you can hear them. And thank you guys for, um, okay. <laughs> All right. So um, where we, be, we, we, our first question was where we began in the process. And um, Jamie from Southwest Elementary talked about beginning with communication and how that looked very differently for every student. Um, some students using ProLocolo to go, other students, I know one of your students uses Braille um, and, and make one student uses sign language. So assuring that every student had their mode of communication addressed first and foremost and making sure that that aligned back to the reading curriculum, which aligned back straight back to Gen Ed um, and making sure that, that it started that way, starting with indiv individualizing the communication um, and then moving towards the standards, and obviously the standards are aligned right to general education. Um, what else? Where else did everyone else begin? Talk, talk to me a little bit more. Where did you begin in the unpacking process? Um, we began, um, well, first, before even that, uh, one of our main goals was just to make sure that everyone was being cohesive and working together on this like on similar curriculum on making sure that you know in our k2 building we had <laughs> we were working on this curriculum and three five this curriculum middle school high school all different um and with the amount of transitions that our kids do we wanted to make sure that they had something similar um so we've added in uh, we've looked at the gen ed curriculum to see how we can that in we've looked at uh, using unique learning systems so that way that we've got that uh, Continuum as they continue to transition to the upper buildings. Um, and then with that unpacking, making sure that they flow and that um, we see that connection from grade to grade in building to building. Absolutely. And I know one of your, your bigger focuses uh, throughout the year um, was making sure that you did look at the curriculum, making sure that it did align specifically to the critical or the high priority content connectors and knowing when to supplement. I'm, Heather and uh, Cindy did an excellent job um, really looking through the what was out there, mm -hmm. general education curriculum, um, EdConnect, um, making sure that they then looked at unique learning systems. And then when that didn't fit uh, the standard, then they looked for additional resources to support, support the learning as well. Um, would anyone else like to respond? It's okay, just give me a nod if we're, everybody else good? Lori. Lori. Southwestly Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, and we realized we had been working on it for the last seven years in the testing. And, um, and we were interested in keeping that moving forward. And when we started looking at the standards, we looked at all the material that we had, and you know, we'd see that we did have gaps mm -hmm. in our testing. So once we wrote out all the, you know, the contact connectors, and standards, how they connected to Gen Ed, then I was able to identify by units, you know, like what else did I need to add? And we've been really busy this year. Yes, you have. Trying to close all those gaps. Yes. And still, huh. Were there specific places that you noticed more gaps? As you started with the critical content connectors, where did you notice the, the gaps um, in your curriculum as you were looking through your lessons? I think our biggest gap was um, we break our our students into groups by ability. So mm -hmm. I have a level one being the lowest, and I, I was really pushing my level three kids. And I necessarily always presenting the same information to students. So okay. I was very fortunate to find some things on. Really help me out. And of course, we use uh, the TLS system as our sure. uh, framework, which sure. we go we go from there. And we found some really good resources this year to help gap mm -hmm. or fill that gap sure. with the level one students. So everybody's getting same <coughs> information, just presented in a different format. Perfect. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And then <laughs> having students would be able to identify or show knowledge on the subject. Absolutely. So we've been really pleased with 
Absolutely. Those setting those high expectations, assuring that every student has access, um, regardless of their level of need towards that standard um, and having the communication to be able to show what they know. Um, talk to me a little bit about who you included in your process or who was part of your team. Um, each team is very different here um, as you were looking at unpacking, but who did you include in the process? There you go. Um, well, I guess included my team. They're a huge part of my team uh, because they have helped me execute the lesson. Sure. And, and we know what each of our strengths are, so mm -hmm. we built around that. And that really made a huge difference sure. because we both are teaching what we love. And, mm -hmm. then, um, and then the other piece was, um, you know, including my principal and then also the special education. And some of my students would migrate later with them. So we're making sure you know, how can we work together to make sure that we are servicing students to the best of our ability. Absolutely. And that they're getting a world class education that we may have not been able to present earlier, you know, in our year, earlier years. But um, that's kind of what we did. Perfect. Perfect. Um, just make sure you talk really loud. At my building, at Hose Elementary, um, done a lot. It, it feels like we've, we've had a lot. We have our kindergarten, first grade math that we use for our school, and trying to um, use those resources. And I felt like I was all over the place trying to, because of all the different abilities in my classroom, trying to meet those needs. And so, um, in working with the, the sixth grade, and Janine, um, I find it's it's also very hard to be able to put time with them to be able to. And we're going to move closer to the mic so that you can hear. So um, we may suspend the video just for a minute, just so our team can sit closely. Um, we're going to feedback that um, you're not able to hear perfectly. So we want to be mindful of that. So we're going to turn off our video for just a minute. Um, we're going to let everyone get nice and close and we're going to continue the interview that way um, just so that we have um, access to to all of the questions and you can hear these ideas. So again, thank you for being flexible. Um, let's talk, we've mentioned communication. Um, let's talk about how you individualize that process. So. What does it look like? How do you identify um, levels of need? How do you include uh, making community? I'm lucky to have six aides in my classroom with my 10 students. So it don't repeat is, that too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is completely changed my classroom. Mm -hmm. It has completely changed the dynamic of everything. Mm -hmm. I'm able to have those students work mostly one on one with students or with the pairs and myself, um, whether they have a lamp device or whether we're just using mm -hmm. cards or whether we're attempting to start signing with them. So those types of communication are what's all driving the way we're presenting the information to sure. them, whether it's just the pictures. Uh, some of my students are able to verbalize what it is that they're learning and their responses. So we don't use as many pictures. So depending on just like the ULS system, mm -hmm. I go through each of the levels with them to determine. I just made up my packets uh, this week for just in case we have the two weeks out. but. <laughs> Even through those, I went through and was able to choose which level my student was at, whether they needed the pictures, whether they just needed the words, um, and how are they going to utilize whatever device it is that they're using at home with their parents sure. with a low level of frustration. So that's been a big push for the lesson planning. And I would even say the more hands on hand on hands on hand approach to whatever lessons that we have in the classroom. So I think it's given us a chance to give them more independence, even within their communication, mm -hmm. and not just 
oh, we can do this for you. We can do this for you. No, sure. you can try this. Yep. You can an attempt. And that's made a big change. Talk to me, just focusing on, on what you just said, talk mm -hmm. to me about how you model communication using your AAC devices, how you model communication using alternate forms of communication, because we know that that is so important. Model for typically developing peers from birth on. Um, how do you guys model and how do you help your parents model best communication practices with individualized students? Actually, this is something that I got from Cindy, the tell show do practices. So, uh -huh. we, <laughs> so we do those even within our calendar time, our group time in the mornings, um, throughout the day, we'll gather back together for direct instruction, mm -hmm. just a uh, whole group instruction there. So we tell them what it is that we're going to do. We show them how to do it. And then it's more the, you like me, and sure. see, this is what I'm doing, you like me, right. or it's a constant. Yes. Yep, <laughs> all day long, consistent, yes. Yes. Um, with intention, right? Yes. So with me saying that, I'm encouraging my staff, which mm -hmm. several have not been trained, sure. as I've been trained, I have to model that, because right. otherwise I get, some of my staff in there that have never been in a classroom like this. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have one who graduated from high school recently. So mm -hmm. she is, for me, she's a sponge. Like she's absorbing all of these types of techniques mm -hmm. and methods to use, um, as well as my more veteran parents that are sure. in there. So just, it's all of us modeling for each other. And it's also a lot of collaboration with each other saying, I noticed that you were doing this. This is maybe something you should try next time right. instead. So that's what that helps us guide perfect daily instruction. Yep. yep. And and being able to realize where the challenge is mm -hmm. and know that we have to provide consistency. Yeah. So we may have to shift up our strategy, but if we can provide it then with consistency, right. um, it benefits benefits that individual student. Um so yeah, go for it. And I think one thing that really helps is having the, that using that language and using that format in my classroom, and then she is using that in her classroom. Mm -hmm. It's helping with that consistency as they move on to the next school. Sure, absolutely. So the consistency between grade levels. Um, okay, so so we'll we'll fuse into the next question. Um, so we've talked. Say, um, yeah, go for it. I, I had an opportunity to visit another classroom, and they do mm -hmm. a phenomenal job of demonstrating and modeling, and like doing it upside down on the kids' device. Yep. Like, and I can't do that. Like, I have to sit next to them and be like. <laughs> So I think that going forward, that's going to become something that I'm going to work on in sure. my classroom is basically having my own communication device and right. those conversations sure. in and having those like organic conversations of how are you and not necessarily doing it with the voice, yep. but with the communication. Them and modeling them with the device. Absolutely. I haven't done that. It's been more of the sit next to them and sure. show them how to do it. And then so just trying to create a more natural experience of conversation <laughs> yep. with students sure. to or AAC device everywhere. Absolutely. And a great way uh, to model for our gen ed peers, mm -hmm. gen ed teachers. Um, as we're using, as, as a teacher, as we're modeling with the device and the students able to have a two way conversation, um, it's just a great way to, to share um, different forms of communication and knowing that we all communicate and that's okay. Um, so, one thing that I would like to um, move towards is how have you shared um, the high expectations through the unpacking with your paraprofessionals, um, with your gen ed peers, um, and with your related service providers? So as you've unpacked, as you've aligned curriculum, um, I'm sure that it's changed the way that you um, teach and the way that you interact with students. So tell me a little bit of ways that you've shared your curriculum, your unpacking, your communication with with all individuals who interact with your students daily? Uh, one of the easiest ways we have done it is all, we have two assistants. I think it's a good lunch. I'm very lucky this year I don't have kiddos who throw food at me. So mm -hmm. um, we could sit and kind of like they're working on independence and things. So monitor and have a conversation mm -hmm. as adults with kids around you, but and just share like ideas mm -hmm. about, hey, this worked earlier, this didn't mm -hmm. work. And then, especially when the weather's nasty and we have mm -hmm. inside recess, we and we have your buddies come down mm -hmm. and work on things with our kiddos so we can take 10 minutes over here sure. and share ideas and do things we need to do because of their split schedule. Mm -hmm. So like I'll meet with my assistant either in the morning and be like, hey, this is the plan, this is what we're doing, what do you think? And I can do that. Well, I have a few sure. minutes with my own. 
just make being intentional about Absolutely. sharing with them what I'm working on and right. what the kids are working on and what are like what my mind when I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Sure. And sometimes they're like, oh yeah, that's great. Sometimes they're like, oh, right, that's gonna work. Yeah. And just so that that sharing of information mm -hmm. works great, and if it doesn't, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna learn. They are. I mean, she's very really like a phenomenal. And one <coughs> this year, she learned how to do braille right. on the braille, and I can't do it. Right. But um, it's it's just been really awesome having. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And there were lots of heads nodding um, when we said being intentional and sharing and taking a risk to try. Um, so I think that's really important. Um, impact on instruction, impact on student learning. What have you seen with the unpacking process, curriculum alignment? We talked about individualized communication. What does that look like for independent students? Give me some success stories. <coughs> Stations mm -hmm. that we work on are individualized for each student. So we break our groups into ability levels. Within that level, <laughs> there may be different levels of learning. Sure. So, um, you know, we have to always constantly be assessing once they've mastered this. I don't keep them on that same skill. <laughs> you know, I always have, always have something waiting, you know. Like, for example, yesterday we were working on greater than last day, and one student was working at a much quicker pace, and this is the second day we've worked on it. Sure. I could tell he was already mastering it, right. so I had some algebra expressions ready sure. for him to work on, and then I continued to work with the other two students who were still kind of struggling with right. it. Right. So I continued working with them, and he was working just fine with the algebra expressions. Sure. So I, you know, in just in a moment, mm -hmm. was able to have that ready for him yeah. to go, and, and he great right and that's and, a great example of formative assessment observing changing your instructional strategies yeah, in the past i may have before i did this sure. i may have just said oh well this is the lesson plan for right today, and we're going to just all plan. keep working on it sure and, and they're bored out of their mind because it's like, right oh, I'm to make you do this right. kind of thing and we totally changed that um this year yeah. Yeah. we've really been we thought we were really individualized which mm -hmm. we were sure but we're even more so now you know, it's identifying why you make a student keep doing this activity. You know, and you, you, you know, being proactive and having things ready, and um, and that's worked really well. Yeah. And then if the students need more time, mm -hmm. then you give them that more time, or you you know keep working on that. You might incorporate uh, the things they need to keep working on in their independent time, or you know until they have it mastered. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Perfect examples um, and, and making sure that we are pacing ourselves and it is okay to move forward. It is okay that we expose students and then we work for mastery in other areas, but knowing and observing students and seeing when it's appropriate to move forward as well. Anything else on that question? I think it's so important to have that. I've taught 27 years and Learned so much over that time. It is such a success to bring them all together and they are all in the same room, moving forward together. And other things will be able to see what I see in my students, and they're able Absolutely. to see more. And I did have a success story not too long ago with one of my students that was not pretty much nonverbal, but then he'll make starting to talk now, and he's using more appropriate. And he'll be starting to like say um, words that I don't know. Mm -hmm. and repeat them. And sure. it's like, it's exciting to be able to kind of like a show. Absolutely. Um, not, setting, not setting low expectations, making sure that we're always striving, but also sh amplifying that. So anytime we're able to share student success stories with our gen ed peers, um, because we do, we have to champion those high expectations. We have to champion our students um, so that people can see what, to your point, what we see and, and know that um, we can put a lot of artificial stamps on students that we have to set those high expectations. All right, before we move on to the next panel discussion, I, I just wanted um, you to share tips out to the field. Um, what, what do you wish that you would have known beginning the process? What do you wish you would have known? What do you wish Meredith 
or your project success coach would, could have supported you with more. Um, how could we have, how could you have, um, if you have information ahead of time, what would it have before beginning the process? I think for me, it was. <laughs> she was. Yeah. She grabbed them. Yeah. I think for me, it was because I, I needed, needed to be able to understand more of what we were going to be doing and unpacking the standard, all those things. Like, there's a lot of things that I've done over time, and I was doing a lot of the right things, but I wasn't. Right me just being able to understand a little bit more about um, what we were going to be doing and how it could benefit my kids. I <laughs> see it now and I see that our building mm -hmm. each other through sure. the process and it's helped to bring our together and I'm excited to see it work. Um, hopefully our preschool will make it. We'll mm -hmm. all be on the same um, page. Um, but I, I think for me it was just like to put it all together and understand what we're doing and there's not a lot of time to learn about it i didn't sure. really know how to do some of the math things and so and the unique learning mm -hmm. for instance and so like I, there's just a lot of little pieces that like um, just don't give up mm -hmm. absolutely i would also say clarification within what exactly project success is mm -hmm. in the beginning because i think i would have had a better buy-in from mm -hmm. all the pairs in my room i think i would have also more so high end from administration because it was also, oh, we need to do this one as well. Mm -hmm. I wish maybe they would have been involved in the very beginning so then they would have mm -hmm. seen the process sure. and what all is being put into this mm -hmm. rather than me having to go explain, sure. well, this is kind of what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, but having, like, even a pamphlet to say mm -hmm. a map visual here, what, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. Where is it that most people are starting now, and where is it we're hoping to be by the end yep. or in the future yep. from where we even are right now? So we can even see where we are within the process, mm -hmm. but where are we going to be Absolutely. eventually? Absolutely. Um, I think that would also help with mm -hmm. buy in for everybody mm -hmm. well, because mm -hmm. I'm also struggling with parent involvement with this of them me sending home mm -hmm. papers that we've worked on, and they're saying, Well, my student can't do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I'm still exposing them to this Absolutely. because. Eventually, they may be able to understand mm -hmm. it. So, if sure. we had not exposed some of my students to the things that we had here in the past, I have one student that would have never known what Antarctica was. Mm -hmm. She is obsessed with it now and wants to go there someday. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to explain <laughs> <laughs> how we're going to do that and how we're going to make that dream come sure. true at some point. She may not have ever had that before. So, I would just say buy in from everybody and having that map. Uh, perfect, perfect. Where they're going. One thing that you discussed is administration support. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you can never underestimate that, making sure yes. that as they, yeah, they have they to be included. To um, but also, we want to make sure as administrators that special educators are included from the beginning with intention. Um, and you've seen the project success, kind of the Indian academic standards with the content connectors that sit side by side. That is a perfect. Um, example of how we can be included as we're inviting ourselves to all of the opportunities. Mm -hmm. But um, it does, it, it starts with that support, um, even the support to have time to look at unpacking or communication um, outside of student interaction time so that you can be the best that you can be um, interacting with your students or preparing your curriculum. So what we're gonna do, thank you, all of you, we're gonna jump to the inclusive, um, inclusive practices questions um, and if you um, attendees um, on the other side of the webinar if you have any questions about unpacking or inclusive practices um, specifically to that what has not been um, covered so far if you would just go ahead and type that into the chat box um, Ashley will relay those questions um, and we can we can move forward okay so there aren't any yet so we'll go on ahead and move forward but Participants, if you do have a question, please put it that way. Ashley will bring those questions over to us. So we're going to start with inclusive practices and thinking about where you began in the process. And each one of us are, are very different in that process um, of how we're interacting with our gen ed peers, how we're interacting with this, the staff across the school setting, how we're looking at intentional um, academic access for students. So talk to me a little bit about where you are in the process. Um, and we know that that's, we're, we're constantly thinking big and starting small. So 
where are we in the process? Where did we start? My school, Mills Elementary, where all of my students, you know, education teachers, that they go to special where they don't have their classes. And some, some of those students go to other things. So it's all across the board because they're all different levels. So um, that's the case for the class. We actually are K one, but my kids I have integrated into the school. Classes. So they're able to learn from the So I would imagine there's also challenges in the process, um, knowing each one of your classrooms. So talk to me a little bit about what the challenge was, but more importantly, how you are starting to overcome it or how you did overcome the challenge with the collabor collaboration with Jeanette. So talk to me a little bit about what the challenge was and then how did you address it? A lot of kids, because they're frustrated or they're <coughs> high school, the initial thought is they can't do their job work. They're doing great level work. Um, but just basically making sure that the teacher sees that kid shine mm -hmm. and when they realize that that's yep. answering his stuff, yes. and they realize, oh, this is answering. Mm -hmm. Like auditorily, he can't write at all. Right. to me a little bit about how you collaborate. So what does that look like? Um, Jenna, teacher yourself, what does it look like as you're, you're meeting and sharing information back and forth? For our Okay. That's primarily what we do, but with the collaboration and the 
who is going to teach what subject matter are you going to supplement mm -hmm. to still be able to reach my students. I work with the other and essentially kind of collecting staff for the class and we haven't yet, but mm -hmm. we can try to um, get our aid. I don't have any available to me, but we are able to like use what we do have and we work together to try to cover all the students. So it's not just my kids, your kids. I'm very fortunate this year. Um, it's worked out that we're very, um, collaborate very well with the special ed building and her um, Transition room as well as exam, but work together very well, and we're able to use that collaboration to help each other. And oh, you have that need, can I help you here? And that's made a huge difference. We're able to do that, and then with the gen ed teachers that way, if there is a problem, then they can um, we all work together to try to fix it. If there is a need. In my classroom, the gen ed setting is the go-to with the sisters or the liberal arts. Right now, at this point in time, they don't go into the classroom every day. So they might have like major challenges and have like incredible problems this year. Uh, the reasoning for the amount of staff that I have in my classroom is that very, medical. very tiny yep. medical-based uh, issues at this point in time. We have every intention on trying and if they learn from me, hopefully. <laughs> about that so Absolutely. I have a few teachers that I've spoke with so far within the building that seem pretty open to the idea of having the students in there so we also collaborate with our simple arts teachers as well to get the buy-in from them to say you know when they are in my classroom what they are capable of so once we can get past some of those other challenges we'll be able to take this work back absolutely I do have one student that um, this year that out all day in a gen ed class, um, I have that class back in that works with all of them. But that teacher has been so like complimentary of her social skills that she has come, and she's just amazed at how far she's come. Um, and it's so it's not all about the academic. Sure, sure. Let's talk a little bit about parents. Um, how Obviously, there were probably many concerns um, when you began some of these processes because many of our students hadn't had that exposure maybe before. Um, talk to me about, you know, what were their concerns? How do you communicate with them to share um, what best practice is and what is, you know, academically, how can you respond to their student need? Um, and then what were some things that they were excited for as they, they got acquainted to your classroom and got acquainted to those collaborative experiences? So concerns. Um, aha moments, excited for um, from the parent perspective. So far, I have a few that haven't bought into all of it yet, okay. um, especially the sure. especially the higher expectations. Um, <laughs> we're still going to do this. We're going to do the hand over hand approach. Uh, but I have some of my higher students within my room that their parents are ecstatic. They mm -hmm. the things that we are covering in the classroom we would have not known otherwise, but they would have really taken it as far as they have. And, mm -hmm so interested in it and then in turn I have one student that comes to mind in specific his parents at the very beginning when we first found him he they would need they couldn't even get him into his elementary school mm -hmm. it was a monster to him and it was terrible and he started coming into sure. our room he's an artist okay he could yep illustrate children's books now <laughs> he's fantastic yes and when I started using the pictures with the words for him hadn't seen that before mm. so now his characters have literally i have chills his characters have come to life his mm -hmm. pictures have come to life everything has eyes on it everything becomes a character sure. story box type thing sure and he's speaking out for me uh -huh. he's answering questions we may not think that he's paying attention mm -hmm. as he's over here creating some of the things out of clay as we're reading stories together but he can tell me all the comprehension and questions the mm -hmm. answers to those and it's in there and he's finally he's excited to come to well, he enjoys mm -hmm. everything about reading and his mom's even gone to the, as far as making some of his characters at home out of felt and she sews them together and he brings them in and we have puppets and everything depending on what our story is and it's we communicate daily almost I send pictures to her in the class no joke and we communicate back and forth all the time and as I do with every one of my parents some of them 
just become frustrated because the kids aren't as excited as we were. But we still have those success stories. And say, you know, we're still trying. We're not giving up yet. Sure. Um, just because they may have an attitude towards this or may, they may not like this, we can try it some, some another way. So the, the next question, I'm gonna to look to you leaders here. Um, just talk to me about the, the process and what you've seen out of students, out of your teachers. Um, share some of those aha moments that you've seen with unpacking, um, inclusive practices. Let's just champion our, our teachers here. We'll brag on them for a minute. Um, what, have, what have you seen? There you go. <laughs> um, they, it's, it's been really great to see them using the different curriculum and using um, and just different ways to reach students, which has been great. There just seems to be a lot more ease in, uh, in their day with that aspect. Um, they've taken on unique learning and all the other things so well. They're using that data to help drive their instruction. They mm -hmm. are, um, I mean, they're using different ways to communicate with kids and they're leading their paras in what they're doing, which is just wonderful and setting a great example um, in the school for higher expectations for those kids. That has been really great to see. And I know I talked to Cindy too and Heather a lot, like it's great that we now have this plan. You know, mm -hmm. we, have, we have maps that we can look at. We know where we're going with these mm -hmm. kids. We know where they're gonna go when they get to their next building. So it just, it helps to have that it, I mean, it feels like a really good team. Like we've got a good team going and we're building off of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've always been really excited and um, supportive of the work that's going on in our Quest classrooms, mm -hmm. but this opportunity has really had a positive impact on our entire school. Um, our teachers have always been very inclusive, but I think now they're being a lot more intentional about thinking about universal design, um, understanding that concept of presuming competence in all students. We were able to repar our entire building, and that was a game changer. Because it gave our general education staff an opportunity to see that um, you know a student with in fifth grade with a first grade reading level can access grade level or even above grade level content when given appropriate support. And um, we've had some parents very excited mm -hmm. about things that Jamie's doing and how that spilled over into general ed mm -hmm. setting. So I'm just excited. I think our whole school is excited about truly embracing the concept of inclusion. And I want to stop looking at this is the inclusion class and this is the inclusion class. Right. And why are we talking like right. inclusion is inclusion is inclusion. Right. If you go to our school, that's mm -hmm. the expectation, no matter what classroom you're mm -hmm. in, that we're going to provide you with the tools necessary to help you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we had a panelist question that came in through the chat box. So um, talk about the success um, that you have had getting students in gen ed. So uh, you've kind of, you've, we've touched on it, but let's talk a little bit more. How much time are they in gen ed? I know this is individualized. So how much time are they in general education? Uh, what subjects? Um, knowing that it looks differently for each student. Can we talk um, to some student examples of what that looks like? Social studies, and again, that's kind of like schedule based and sure. one week. 
Perfect. Is it too hard? Okay. Uh, well, we have a combination of students. Um, some, uh, our highest students, they, they go out to so, uh, social studies science and they go to the accelerated math and accelerated reading uh, session and mm -hmm. as well as, um, you know, all the specials and things like that. Um, my level one students, uh, due to behavior issues, I keep them in the room pretty much the whole day when we do adaptive specials in the room. So, um, and then I have a group of kids that kind of go out, um, they, social sciences, and then um, just specials. So it's kind of a combination. Of course, we base it on each individual student and what they're able to handle, um, you know, behavior-wise as well as, um, you know, how much help we have, those types of things. So we had to take that all into consideration. I do have some students that go out for just like circle time, um, some students that go out for just specials, and I have some, um, I have a couple of different that go out for the reading block um, or also just for, I have one that's out like all day. So it's kind of all over the place with my kids and um, we just look to see what their needs are and try to fit those needs. All right, so the next question from the audience is, how did you find your champion teachers? How have you worked with them? Um, how do you continue to, to help your champion teachers grow and learn? Um, and I know that each teacher is at a different level, but how have you built established rapport, built collaborative experiences with those champions? Um, what are your next steps growing your champion teachers? Yes, how did they help you spread the word from there? Well, for me, it, I've I've taught 27 years, so I in always in a life type setting, and I've taught with some of the same teachers. Um, so I've I've had them over the time, but usually what happens is they just they fall in love with the kids, and they ask me to like, oh my gosh, who am I going to get next year? Or once they're once they've moved on to the next school, or so it's really about just falling in love with them and just knowing that they they have um, high expectations for them too and they want to see them succeed and so perfect. I think also one of the thing we is to let them let the teachers know that we're not going to send them uh, or put them into a situation that's going to be maybe uncomfortable or that they may not know how to handle it that type of thing um, and and just building that trust with them and, you know, of course, collaborating and that type of thing, I, I would say they'd probably be the big ones. Um, and, and like you said, uh, they just fall in love with the kids and, and, you know, they look forward to seeing them just as much as we do. Sure, sure. Uh, same thing, just building the relationship with the teachers. Um, I've been in the building I'm in now for 10 years and so just building those relationships <laughs> and working with them and the same thing being like, hey, you're going to love this kid. Yes. And then the first couple yes. days are like, oh my gosh, I love it. I, yes. I told you. I told so, you. Right? Yeah. so yeah, just kind of the same things, fostering those relationships, building them up. And again, talking to them and assuring them, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome for you. It's going to be awesome for the student. It's going to be awesome for your class. And so just champion them that, yeah, yeah. we're going to tackle it together. We're a team. Exactly. We're going to work together. So, And that's one of the, I think one of the biggest things is as special educators, we are masters at modifying behavioral supports. Um, making sure that we can we can rock a schedule any day, right? We can create a schedule on the fly, in the moment. Um, and our, our gen ed teachers are subject matter experts and we have to have both. And we have to be able to collaborate with them. And knowing that, to, to your point, is we're gonna rely on you as the subject matter expert and I'll be right there, or my para who I'm gonna train is gonna be right there to help provide those modification supports until you feel comfortable to do it. And then you may absolutely take those reins and own it. Um, and I can help collaborate and support you in that process. I think that's so important that, that yes, you're, that we're going to do this together. And then when you feel comfortable, we're going to let you own some of that as well. Um, talk to me a little bit about what next steps look like for you. Um, I know this is a big, a big um, goal setting piece, but in a perfect world, what are those next steps in your building, et cetera, classroom with students? 
Um, this year it was just me as part of the project success and my administrators and our speech therapists. So next year we're including uh, we have a um, I teach fourth and fifth. We have a two three in my building and then in a separate building here in Greenwood is K one. And so making it uh, all elementary schools and working together along the same goals and towards the same things. Um, and so just keep fostering the like we're going to start down here with the little guys and build forth that everybody's absolutely going to have the same high expectations, the same opportunities, the same plan and the dream that you know we're going to push everybody out to be successful as much as possible. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, our, one of my biggest um, goals for next year is going to be um, more collaboration with uh, Janet and the mild. What can I learn from them that I can make better in my own room and what can they learn from me? You know, um, just because I work in the intense intervention room doesn't mean that we do not have uh, a lot of skills to offer people that, that you know may need that. Um, and then, like you said earlier, um, working with since we have four through six, we're kind of collaborating with my junior high teacher, um, and, and she's excited about trying to get started with the model uh, site and how she can just keep that evolving and then hopefully get our high school going and as well as the grades lower than us. Um, so those are our ultimate goals to get you know. Kind of get that rolling. For me, I'd really like to be able to split our speech teachers um, in our, our building um, and just my administrator, like understanding more about what we're doing. And um, they've had a really busy year with other changes in our school. So we've changed a whole scholastic program and integrating that, in it, which I do too in my classroom with Annie. But um, I think just like making it flow more together and make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, and my hope is to, of course, get more students involved in the general education classrooms. Um, and just so far, just getting buy in from some of the teachers that have already approached me as well about it, um, getting them excited and looking forward to making plans with them is what we're going to do. One thing that we had talked about doing too is creating a mission statement. Um, for room two to put outside of the doors. That way, too, everybody knows what our mission and what, what we feel about these kids and just to kind of help promote that inclusion. And I know that was one of the Quest team here at Greenwood. Um, they put together a mission statement, I think, at the beginning of the school year um, that just highlighted the entire program's um, mission and vision for all students, especially those with significant cognitive disabilities. So I'm, I'm taking some questions from the chat box here. Um, these will be random questions. Um, how do you find the time to collaborate with Jenna? Yep, it's difficult. Let's talk about it. It's very, <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't have a prep time. I, I don't, there, it just doesn't, but with the medical needs and things of some of my students. I don't have that. I eat lunch with my students. I, I'm in with them the whole day and to go to the bathroom literally I have to just quickly go and have someone cover for me. Um, but I'm fortunate to have the other um, the transition teacher next door to me so I can say, hey, can you cover my class for um, you know two seconds? <laughs> so I can turn to the bathroom. Um, literally. But um, I think just if it's an email. email um, saying, hey, um, just can we get together, together for, you know, five minutes, minutes before school? school. I, it's very, very difficult. Um, you have to find work for them. And I just want to go kind of do it when I can find time. <coughs> Um, one of our Jenna teachers did is she um, she would send me the Google Classroom lessons that they would be working on, and of course that's just the initial steps of us trying to do the inclusion piece. But um, you know, and then how can I support her with that? And then hopefully we can evolve this process um, to where we can do more collaboration. But right now that was a good start uh, because time is an issue, and you know trying to. You know, our lunches are not the same time and, you know, after school is hit and miss type thing. So, you know, that's kind of where we started and, um, you know, and hopefully that can evolve. That's what we're Absolutely. Doing. And getting creative in the process, right? Like email, Google Sheet. Um, I, I know um, a lot of us are 
the maps are put or the lesson plans for each grade level are put up there and they have interactive pieces. One of our other model sites kind of collaborates through Google. So um, finding different and creative outside of the box ways. Sometimes just standing by their door. <laughs> as well, right? Go ahead. As well, that's what I was going to say. Um, a lot of it is through email with teachers, but um, I take kids to homeroom in the morning. So that's my fifth grade reading teacher. So maybe I'm like, while they're doing morning work, hey, what's the, you know, will you email me the plan for next week? What's going on? And we can kind of chat about our kiddo. Um, I do take kids to lunch, so my fifth grade teachers are also in there or the fourth grade. So again, that's another opportunity that we're like, hey, what's going on and what's happening? Um, we have on, I don't have a, a built in prep, but um, if I can work it out, like we met with you and the fifth grade teachers, we've met with patents and the fifth grade teachers. And so making, I make that time to make sure during their prep and we chat and share and it's been awesome. Yes, and, and just catering to, to their schedules and, right. and being flexible and having admin support to help you Absolutely. do that and communicating with Beth, your principal, to, to assure that that time's available. We've also given up some PLC time toward, <laughs> yeah. I, I shouldn't say given up, it's not right, but, um, dedicated mm -hmm. some PLC time. Um, we've been intentional about those meetings, <laughs> whether that be with Amy and grade level teams or special areas. To try to make that time. Perfect. Hey, Meredith, can you hear me? Sarah over here? In my classroom, I also have a focus board that um, I take a picture of every week and put it on our dojo for our parents and also for the staff so that they can see what we're doing and what, um, what so it, we're focusing on it. Um, would be our core vocabulary, it would be our, um, what the theme is for that week, what we're doing, whether it be the letter, whatever, whatever we're doing. Um, I try the overall view, um, I try to put on there and then that goes to the parents. I used to take pictures of it um, or actually copy it and send down with parents, but now with Dojo, our school is using that. I'm able to just take pictures and everybody's on the same page, so they know what we're doing during the whole week. Um, and each week that changes. So just so everyone knows that's attending in the Padlet, I included a screenshot of the focus board for Cindy's classroom where you can see each objective, you can see um, even the books that she's working on. Um, it just provides a visual aid to what um, the principals, the kids know, the paraprofessionals know, related service teachers as they're walking in that classroom, they're identifying what those objectives are. Um, I'm gonna jump in and just ask a specific question. As you were modifying gen ed curriculum, unpacking, uh, how did you begin? Did you begin by a grade level? Did you look across grade levels? I know each one's slightly different um, at this time, but what were some of your takeaways as you're looking at gen ed curriculum, modifying, adjusting, where did you begin? Uh, for ours, we, since I have third, fourth, and fifth grade, all three, um, we started with the fourth grade as being our kind of in the middle road. Um, and then from there, unpacking through all of the different levels, level one, two, three. Um, as it goes with unique and then we also incorporated our scholastic and then we have connect ed for math so i've tried to incorporate where i'm finding the gaps with unique i'm trying to fill in with the scholastic and the um, other resources that i find um, when those even uh, yeah let's like find out uh, we have scholastic news we have just pulling everything in as much as we possibly can. And then from there, I've also uh, ventured out to some of the gen ed teachers to say, you know, what is it you're doing with this type of thing? So I can incorporate that within there as well. Um, so then we started out with that, with language arts and math, and then I started out with the whole panel here. <laughs> yep. I got a group of us, and then we eventually incorporated Cindy. Yes. And at the very beginning, it was just myself, and then as we start continue to build, mm -hmm. and then we've also spoke with the middle school teacher and the high school teacher, which hopefully will get them involved as well. Because when we first started with all of this, we didn't have combined of anything. Our flow, there was no flow. It was I was doing this because when it first started, was can you have a classroom ready by Monday? <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it never in my life. Um, so just that for everybody else and I'll that I'm talking because we were all involved with it at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
started unpacking a year after the gen ed teachers started unpacking their standards. So we kind of were behind the eight ball just a little bit. Um, but what we did is I kind of did the same thing you did, looked at four, five, and six grade level PLS as our framework. And um, and the other thing we did was um, we I looked at all the materials that I had already created prior to starting this process. And then I looked at also looked at what do I already currently have going on in my room? For example, we do the weather every single day. OK, how can I use that and embed certain skills every day that they can use for math? Uh, geography, what, what, how can I incorporate that? So yeah, science. So we use the maps. We talk about the keys on the map and how to read a map. This is a special kind of map. And then we would take the weather temperature for the week. Okay, what can we do with those numbers? How much did the temperature change within the couple of days? Can we add up all the averages or can we average the temperature for the week? And they're, they're learning, you know, median, uh, in averages that way, um, you know, what's the freezing temperature point? You know, things like that. How can we incorporate it daily? We're just embedding all these skills. We did the same thing with reading. Um, of course, they were all similar across the board for each grade level. And then how can we incorporate? And then we're just, it's all encompassing. Because if we do the group, then they're going to get, fourth graders are also getting sixth grade standards. I'm sorry. It's sometimes for the sake of time, you have to do that, and, but you have to, again, we're working at their level, and you know what? You just get it two years earlier, and you get two years to work on it. You know, that's kind of how we look at it. And the um, great thing, they're aligned. So, right. you know, they're aligned, so there's a lot of similarities vertically um, across from fourth, fifth, and sixth, and you can pull out those key skills and concepts, and that's it precisely what you're doing, right. looking at. And that's how we skills. can cover three grade levels at the same time. And that's worked really well for this this year. And, you know, of course, we always want to tweak and, and move forward and, and have a grander plan for next year. But, you know, it's the point from the yep. beginning. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. So one of the questions that came up on the chat box was about test scores and how that affects evaluation. So um, we want to make sure that we're providing inclusive opportunities, but sometimes that fear holds people back. Um, Joe, would you mind just kind of addressing that quickly? Not to throw it exactly on you, but you had a great response yesterday when we were on site about uh, the percentage that impacts or doesn't impact in that way on what, your evaluation. I think in this time and this age of teaching alone, it's, um, you know, I, I think it's one of the greatest professions that, that we can enter into. And we always talk about in this district about giving access, um, trying, being successful, learning from trying, um, all kids are welcomed. You know, something that stood with me yesterday is we build ramps for kids mm -hmm. into classrooms. And so in this district, we also do not um, evaluate the teacher on a one day performance either. So I know Beth is fantastic about going into a classroom and the teacher's like, I need a redo. She goes back in. that it's just not a one time. But we look at our day-to-day -day successes and we're not looking at the one time. Um, you know, when you have three kids in your classroom and one's melting down and I'm having to attend to a child in the hallway, um, I think those performances outweigh any score in a rubric that teachers can earn. And I, uh, we feel very fortunate to work in a district where our superintendent models that every day and we follow that lead from him. Yep, that, that, that impact of administration um, and that clear vision for the, the entire district, including all students and assuring that all means all um, in, in the process. Um, give me your biggest aha moment. And we're gonna leave the chat box open for just a couple more minutes, but give me your biggest aha moment for the year. Um, we're gonna have the participants do that as well. Um, we'll pass it around so whoever finds their aha first. Um, but we would like in a minute, participants, we're gonna open that up for you for today's um, panel and discussion. But I wanna hear from, from the panel. I'm gonna put them out there. Um, you're giving me looks, but that's okay. So, <laughs> biggest aha moment. For, for me, um, 
has to has to do with the teacher evaluation. Um, when they came in to do my teacher evaluation, it was chaotic. Um, it was uh, it was a hot mess. I'm not gonna lie. And we used um, this year being our first year to use unique and to use I. You know, I just did what I did, what I do every single day, and um, they got to see exactly what it was like, and my evaluation actually went up. So <laughs> they got to see exactly like how um, different levels the kids like that. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's some great, great things that come from doing that. Absolutely. I think mine would be collaboration just within. The, there are other teachers out there like me. <laughs> Do exist. Uh, because before, Cindy and I never had a chance to really collaborate, and now Laura's coming in. And it's kind of, if she's not able to join with us, then I still get feedback from what she's doing. And like her focus board, I never would have found out about that had it not been for a day that we were all collaborating. And it's like, well, what are you doing in here? Um, same thing for the teachers in the middle school and the high school. We had never had those opportunities before, before Project Success. Um, they've been more frequent this year than they ever have been. So, like when I first started, I always heard about the Cindy Cooper lady, and <laughs> everybody referred to her like I thought she was famous. Uh, <laughs> then I met her, and I was like, she should be. <laughs> so, having those chances to, yeah. Yeah, because before I would go to a staff meeting, it's like, or some type of a meeting, and they would say, oh, this probably doesn't pertain to you. Well, now I can walk in there and say, yes, it does, and I'm going to stay here. So it's just made it, I think, a better environment, a better work environment, just with us being included, not just the students being included, but us being included as well. So I feel like I have people out there that I can reach out to finally uh, because of this. Sure. I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> and I think you think too when you're you start to ask teachers like, oh, do you have anything? Uh, what do you use for uh, teaching the continents? And they're like, you're teaching the continents, yeah. you know? And they're like in shock. And it's like, yeah, yeah. We also teach algebra, science, and you know, and all these other things. And they're just shocked. And it's like, um, not really shocked, but it's just they're surprised. I should say. But um, I feel like. This whole process has helped us gain more respect from our, you know, our, our other peers um, in the education field. But uh, as far as the classroom aha moment is, is that um, the biggest thing is is planning works. <laughs> that was, what, you know, I thought I had my act together until I started doing all this planning, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is uh, really entailed, and um, and then. Just identifying where my gaps were, mm -hmm. you know. I thought, I thought we, were, up until we started this, we thought we were doing, and we did. We had a good handle on things. We did because mm -hmm, we'd been working on it for a long time. But, um, but then see where your gaps is, and we as hard as we worked this year, and uh, you know, we have we closed a lot of those gaps, uh, but we still have a few more to get for next year. And of course, that changes every year based on the student, the students you get in your room. So you're constantly tweaking. Tweaking how you organize your room, how you run your schedule. Um, those are the main things. It's just always being on your toes, being flexible, and be willing to do whatever it takes to get the information and helping the students succeed in the classroom. Um, I think my biggest aha moment was around a kiddo with communication, and we tried everything, and pretty much, well, I guess my biggest aha moment was it's okay to fail, um, but it's you're going to do it and not to take it personal. Like, don't, I mean, I did first several times I've cried, but don't stay there. Like, get up, try again, and just keep, you know, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And it finally stuck this year, and he is using sign language with intention and with purpose. And it's not just him screaming and grunting or whatever. He's acknowledging that he needs something or he wants something and making those requests and those. Just having those conversations and so that's been huge but you know that i think my biggest just realization was it's okay to fail just get up and keep going perfect perfect um okay so we've we've talked about our aha moments what i would like to switch to um i want to open it up and i want to share a little bit with our panel so i'm going to pull the presentation towards me a little bit uh less off of you um and then what i'm going to do um, we still may have, we're going to keep the chat box open, so I'll keep our panel close. Um, and we'll make sure that, that um, we can ask questions if they arise. 
But one thing we talked about inclusive practices, and we've talked about um, that opportunity. You've talked about building your team. So one thing is for this summer, our project success team jumped right in to assure that that we were addressing just that. Um, so I just want to let everyone who is attending know that our summer regional trainees will focus on building inclusive teams, um, joining together to do uh, much of what we have discussed today uh, and what each of our model sites has shared out. Um, that is going to be the focus of our regional training. So bringing in an inclusive team, bringing in your EL specialist, bringing in your SLP, making sure that your administrators um, are right there beside you. So if you'd like to learn more, it, there's a link here. It's also on our, on our website. Ashley Quick is your contact, or you can email me and I'll just send it right to Ashley and we'll get you the answers that you need about that. Um, we have, uh, I think, six sessions over the summer. Um, same session, just different locations. So hopefully um, all day and you can um, hopefully find one that's close to you um, and meet up with both your team and as we've learned today and as we've um, continually learned that opportunities where we're able to pull teachers from multiple districts together, there's an impact in hearing the story. And this is this is another way to hear that story and hear and build on ideas of each other. Um, so with that being said, there is a goal template, both on Padlet and on our website. Um, this is just a tool for you to think about your local district. We had each one of our model sites complete this at the beginning of the session. When we began working with them, even the ones that we began working with two, uh, almost two and a half years ago, uh, they completed this template and we complete it every year that we jump into um, our new new school year. We, we wrap it up by May so that we have a clear and concise vision for what we want to accomplish. So we wanted to share that with you. It's on the Padlet. Um, Mary also linked it to the website. So you can download this and develop individualized plans for your team. Um, so I just wanted to make that available that those model site teams templates are up there. And then in, in the next uh, few minutes, what I would like for you to do is click on that aha moment link. Um, it's on the presentation, it's on the website, it's in the Padlet, um, whichever is easiest to access for you. And if you would just fill out your aha moment today, we're going to capture that and just share it out. We'll also, the project success team will leverage that. Um, any, any opportunity that we can fuse in those ideas into our professional development, we will. And then in the chat box, if you would just share a next step after hearing our panelists today, after hearing um, some things that they're doing with their teams, what are, you, what are your next steps? Um, whether it's one small next step, whether it's large and you're developing out a team, if you would just put those in the chat box, Ashley will collect those. We would love to hear from you. So we'll just give a couple of minutes for you to do that. Um, in the meantime, uh, what I would like for you to do, our panelists are gonna stay up here. If there are questions, add those to the chat box too. Um, and here is one, let me read it first. Um, okay, so exposure versus mastery. We've talked about that a lot. Um, how do you assure that students are still progressing and gaining skills? Um, as you're kind of balancing, we're going to expose students here, we're going to work towards mastery here, here, and here. How are you assuring that students are moving forward, gaining skills um, along the way? So how do you know that they're, how do you know that they're learning? How do you know that they've mastered the skill? Or how do you know that they're progressing towards a skill? Um, and how do you determine when to move forward? Um. I do like progress monitoring and formative assessments like well formative assessments almost daily but progress monitoring like once a month and you're looking at what your patient says and you got it. one more month of like kind of reviewing to make sure mm -hmm. and then after I'm calling parents it's like mm -hmm. oh those IEP goals I wrote like yeah. three months ago yeah I give them a lot of yeah it's all about this check and keeping that data mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. One thing, I'm just going to jump in. One resource that's available to you on our resource page is a formative assessment strategy. Um, our team wrote it specifically for students with significant disabilities. Um, that's a great place to start. I know Jamie and the rest of the team fuse in many of those um, strategies naturally into their instruction to to determine next steps, but 
there's a very formal document there that's, I think, quick and easy to read, and it has the typical formative assessment strategy and then thoughts for a student with significant disability. So just wanted to highlight that to, to piggyback on Jamie. In addition to the, oh, everything Jamie said, um, we also make sure that we have a large, not large, but we have some really good resources that um, that where we can reach all students. One one thing that we use is Brain Pop. Um, it's animated, so the kids love it, and it has virtually uh, a video for every subject matter, whether it's exponents or teaching tectonic plates, whatever it is. They have they have a wide genre of lessons on there, so that my students who are, you know, need errorless learning, you know, they're still getting exposure to that information, even though they may never meet mastery of it. And that way, uh, and using um, like fun game type review mm -hmm. type things that we have online, um, the students just somehow connect with that and they're able to show us a lot that they may not be able to tell us verbally or demonstrate. So we just being creative in some of the things that we offer to the students um, can help us identify, you know, how well they're accepting or, you know, doing with the information. And on Bring Pop, you can search by a standard or topic, correct? Yes. So another way to just where you see a gap or need to supplement, being able to provide another um, expression form for or representation form for a teacher to show. I think I have a friend too, they use like um, mm -hmm. They have a lot of, my, a lot of my students love to use it. Mm -hmm. Learn the letters, mm -hmm. learn the sounds, learn the sight words. Those are really, Great things, and then I had a former teacher um, many years ago that um, the golf scramble after and raised money to get some iPads for my house. And so then we're able to do a lot with that. And then the yeah. Let's Find Out um, earlier, Let's Find Out has a lot of um, great videos and games and vocabulary. The Science Spin that's just a great one. Um, and we do. Um, Yeah. Okay. Have something. Uh, Absolutely. As far as progress monitoring goes, we use what we have with ULS. Um, I also use a program called Sing, Spell, Read, and Write, and it incorporates music and um, basically phonics skills for all the students, and it has progress monitoring wrapped within it as well. Um, I also go through and uh, go through their standard or their goals on their IEPs and make sure just as she does checking through is there something on here we need to change what have they completely blown out of water and uh, hey mama he, he has this there's no reason for us to do this so um, whether that be mastering whatever level of reading that they're doing or whatever it is on math skills that they've worked on at that point in time as well so uh, progress monitoring through ULS through and we also do uh, Edmark as yep. well as another supplemental activity mm -hmm. for them. And that's something that we just go through at the beginning of the day. They get on there for 10 minutes or so, each of them. And that gives me another instance where I can look at where are they progressing for reading levels. That's perfect. All right. So, what I will what I want <laughs> to do next, we'll keep the chat box open. Please make sure that you're adding those aha moments using that link. We have just a few more minutes, and I just wanted to share out a few. Um, important upcoming opportunities for you to be aware of. So um, if you aren't already a member of our quarterly newsletter, please uh, click on this link. Um, it is right here in the presentation and, and sign up for that. We provide a quarterly newsletter that highlights um, celebrations, it highlights best practice, and it highlights just upcoming opportunities from our team. So we just wanted to, to share that out. Um, I've spoken on the inclusive teams. Um, if you're interested in having on-site professional development from the project success team, uh, where a project success team coach um, comes to your site and uh, you complete a needs assessment to drive that instruction, uh, there is on-site professional development information. That's a flyer. It includes all of the information step-by-step -step that you might need um, to sign up and be a part of that. And then one of the other uh, pieces that we're jumping into this school year is the teacher leader cohort. So what this will be is um, helping teachers become leaders within their district, um, within their school community, and doing so with a team to help support that. So um, we're inviting all of our model sites to be a part of that just naturally, um, to help provide examples and ideas of what they've learned um, and to be thought partners with our teacher leaders. 
um, but also we'll be able to have uh, month to month um, professional development, five sessions in person together, um, working on both professional development, ideas to share out within your district. All of the things that we've talked about are on the today are on that um, scope and sequence for that teacher leader opportunity. So we'll be selecting around 30 teacher leaders that would like to participate in our cohort alongside our model sites who are available. Um, and there's a link there to join that. And of course, uh, we have free professional development for paraprofessionals, uh, currently six courses uh, that align directly to uh, things that your pairs are experiencing in the classroom day to day. Everything from understanding cultural competence to working on um, assistive technology and accessible materials. Honestly, they're appropriate for teachers as well. So um, they're completely free to you um, and you can log on. There's a flyer linked right here to join and be a part of it. Um, we found it to be extremely helpful for all. Um, and last but not least, if you wanna contact us, our emails are here in the presentation. They're also on the website. Um, I just wanna thank first and foremost our attendees for being flexible through this opportunity. Um, we've had to think on our feet a lot today and that's, I think that's the message of education, right? Thinking on our feet. So I appreciate you being flexible um, and, and thinking about health first and, and participating digitally. I apologize for any uh, kinks that we had to work through. We recorded a lot of this, so we'll make it available if you miss some things. And then our model sites, thank you so much um, for jumping in, trying new things, stepping outside of your comfort zone um, to our leaders for championing our teachers always. Um, and I appreciate you. So um, questions, if you have questions for the, the um, team, send them to one of us here on, on this link, a project success team member, and we can um, get you in connection to our model sites. And without that, we are ending with just five minutes. We'll uh, keep the chat box going and actually can um, correspond back to us. But if not, we're gonna end today and thank you for your time.